Hey, what's up, everybody? Corey here again. It's Thanksgiving Day. Uh, just breaking out of the house for a little bit before we do lunch and all that. Uh, shoot a quick video. I shot it last night and uh, or yesterday, and it was just a little dark, so it got kind of grainy on me. So I thought, well, we'll give that another shot. But uh, today we're going to get back on the line of underappreciated guitarists. And I've got one that I think uh, is, is a good fit. Pearl Jam's Mike McCready. In the world of grunge, amazing guitar work was just not as much of a thing as it was before that. Uh, you know, grunge was the era of, you know, the power chord and the minor and the... Uh, so, it was more about angsty lyrics and less about uh, instrumental flash and the interesting thing though is that Mike McCready combined with Gossard uh, really transcended the difference there from 80s hair metal and shreddy solos into the 90s with all of the changes that meant. If you go back and listen to 10 First off, it came out 29 years ago. Let's let that sink in for a minute. Feed the depression that that creates. Okay. So, that particular 29-year-old album, I mean, even if you look at just that without touching the rest of their catalog, which many people do, I don't like them, but that's what many people do. Uh, the riffs, the intros, the... You know, there weren't a lot of solo solos in the traditional sense, but there were some solo-esque moments. It was all impressive for its time, because you're, you're going from a period where all of the music was, was happy, it was about partying, it was about sex and drugs and all that stuff, into the, the age of angst uh, that became grunge. So when the lyrics changed, so did guitar technique. Instead of, you know, majors flying through major scales and stuff, you're seeing, you know, flat fifths and, and a lot of minors uh, used in what was very popular music at its time. Uh, the truth is, some of my favorite riffs of all time come off of that first Pearl Jam album. Uh, Alive, Once, even flow, Jeremy, all of those fantastic guitar songs. We, we think of them lyrically because lyrically they're all pretty fantastic too. But we shouldn't bury the power of those riffs to the side because that was great guitar music. Uh, as much as no one wants to think of grunge as being the era of great guitar music. Uh, but. Pearl Jam crossed that line, and uh, in a in a great way, you know. And it even continued on through through verses. I mean, you know, with uh, oh, Animal. Oh, I forgot Animal. Uh, you know, moving on to Vitalogy with Spin the Black Circle and songs like that. They have always been a guitar band. You know, McCready in the early years and through a good chunk of his career was was very much a Strat guy. Uh, you see him playing beat up old Strats all the time, even some tallies. But over time, he also shifted into the world of Les Pauls. And you'll see him with some both single and double cut Les Pauls pretty often. So uh, I think he still uses a uh, Les Paul for Alive when they perform. But, but you hear that difference in sound. I mean, when you go back and listen to that first album, you hear Strat, you know, and, uh, and I like that. Something else we often forget about um, is that Pearl Jam had just a plethora of acoustic music that was fantastic. Uh, songs like Black, Daughter, uh, Better Man, I Am Mine, Yellow Lead Better, the list goes on. There's a lot more. 
uh, and all of those were, in my opinion, equally creative because, you know, it wasn't every rose has its thorn. You know, you're not hearing, you know, two chords here. In fact, Yellow Leadbetter, which I think he's even admitted was very much a Hendrix tribute kind of kind of song, it, it has that Hendrixy vibe uh, and a lot of techniques that he used to use as well. But to be a just a B side on a single, uh, matter of fact, that might be I'm trying to think. I can't think of another B side that's done as well as Yellow Leadbetter. Uh, I'm certain there is probably, so if if there is, throw it in the comments, because I'm curious. Um, maybe that'll be a good video one day. Best B-sides. Um, but it's it's an interesting song, the real flowing melody that does a... It, it makes you want to smile. It really does. Because you don't know what the hell Eddie's saying in Yellow Led Better. I'm, I'm just kidding. I, I love Eddie. I really do. But for many years, you know, it was it was kind of a joke about you know, I'd better like have no idea what he's saying. You know, and interesting thing about McCready is that his his playability and style have kept moving forward throughout Pearl Jam's career up to even you know Gigatron and the later albums. You know, you still hear that serious McCready influence that that helped shape the early career of Pearl Jam. The fact of the matter is, more people should think of Pearl Jam as a guitar band than what do. They tend to get lumped in with Nirvana, is part of the problem. And Nirvana was the poster child for grunge to, to most people. However, for them, guitar-wise, grunge was about the chords and the punch. It was, it was very much a more of a simplistic style, in my opinion. I'm sure there are people who will argue and be all offended because I said that, but that's okay. Um, I'm not dissing them, I'm just explaining how different they are from from Pearl Jam, for example. But I always feel like that, that grunge tag has kind of pushed them away from the guitar world in a lot of ways, when in fact, this is great guitar music, and, and I hope that everyone will, will take some time, maybe kick back, put tin on during the holidays, uh, or any of the other albums for that matter, especially those first three. Those first three are my jam. Uh, but give those a listen, and, uh, and gain a new appreciation for Pearl Jam as a guitar band, because it's very much what they are. We just, maybe a lot of people haven't realized it. You know, McCready's gotten gotten his props over the years from Guitar World and magazines like that. Don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying he's he's gone completely unrecognized. I'm just saying that he's not a guy we hear a lot about, despite the fact that Pearl Jam still fills stadiums top to bottom and uh, and could sell out a tour in hours. You know, so it's kind of surprising that we don't think about them a little more than we do. Uh, coming up next, not today, but in the next few days, we're going to have another uh, Why Guitarists Love video. I've enjoyed those. I did the one on Eric Clapton the other day. It was a lot of fun. You know, why do guitarists love this guy? What is it about him, his style, that draws musicians in? So we're going we're gonna to keep doing those as well as the underappreciated guys and see what kind of, what kind of neat stuff we can come up with along the way. But please take a minute, like, subscribe, comment. Those really help us out, and we're very grateful for everyone who does and takes a minute out to watch these videos. Uh, but that's about it for today. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you back next time.